Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK. And today, I, before I go into my um, video, I just wanted to say that, you know, that I expect comments from my videos because that's what they're there for. It's an open forum and people are sp it's supposed to allow people to interact and, you know, subscribers give their comments, which is absolutely fine. I don't believe that people should be become personal in the comments. I mean, there are people asking me if my hair's my own, if I'm wearing a horse hair, if I'm trying to be white, if I'm trying to be Eurocentric. That's got nothing to do with the topic at hand. And you have to um, understand that some people, you don't know why they do what they want, why they do what they do. Suppose I have a health condition. Suppose I have alopecia. Suppose I have cancer. You don't know why my circumstances. So please don't make judgments because what it does, it just reflects on yourself. And also it stops other vloggers. If vloggers, um, people who want to vlog, they see that people are being personal, it's going to turn them off. And we want to be encouraging people. You know, whether or not you like what people are saying and how people look, people have a choice. And if you don't like the fact that I, you know, I'm not natural or if I, you know, whatever I do or whatever I wear or however I speak, you just go on to another channel. But it's not right to um, inhibit people and criticise unnecessarily. So now I've got that out of the way. I wanted to talk about fathers, why some fathers leave and some fathers stay. Now, um, I was wondering, OK, let's talk about the fathers who stay, first of all. Normally, fathers who stay, from what I've witnessed, is because they feel confident, um, they stand up to the women, they've um, chosen well, they don't feel intimidated by the woman. So if the woman criticises or um, attacks him in quotes, um, tells him to do stuff. He doesn't take it personally. He doesn't take offence. He doesn't become defensive. Um, he's not overly sensitive. And I think, you know, when I think about a lot of white relationships, not all, of course, because you've got good and bad in everything, but I find a lot of um, relationships, you know, white relationships are a bit like that. They don't take things personally. They just get on with it. The wife can nag till the cows come home. They just become immune or they go off to the pub or they come in and she's quietened down and it just becomes like a noise, a background noise. And they don't take anything seriously or personally. They just get on with it. And as the years go by, they get used to each other. There's something about um, black fathers, however, um, in the black family, whereby they are overly sensitive. And so if a woman or a black woman, I don't know about white women because I can only speak for myself, but if a black woman criticises him or makes him feel inadequate in any way, he takes it personally. He gets defensive. He doesn't want to stand his ground. He doesn't feel confident enough to stand his ground. Sometimes it makes him feel inadequate. And sometimes we don't know the background of fathers. You know, we don't know if they had a stable upbringing. We don't know if they were criticised and put down or bullied. And as a result, they feel as though they've got to defend themselves or they feel as though it's just not worth it. It's not worth the investment. It's not worth the emotional grief. It's not worth the turmoil. So they walk out. But my point is, is that I don't understand. OK, if you're walking out on the women, why walk out on the child? Because the child is an innocent party. And I know that in certain circumstances, there are some people, there are some um, judges that put out an order if a man has been aggressive, abusive and have assaulted the women, they've stopped the man from seeing the woman. But there's usually measures in place for him to see the child. So I don't understand why um, fathers don't see their children. They've got children wandering around. They, and if they grow up, they probably wouldn't even recognise them as adults. And that's not really fair. Children are looking for teachers and fathers. They're looking for, and if the father can be both, that's great. But sometimes teachers love to teach and it's left to them. And a teacher can be anybody in the community.
And but a father is special. A father technically loves his child, and there should be a bond there. You you know, in looking at somebody who looks like you, there should be a bond. And I don't understand how fathers can just abandon their children. I'm not talking about those, like I said, who have been prevented from seeing their children. I'm talking about those who volunteer not to see their children and why they leave. You know, so, yeah, I understand people leave because there's health um, health implications. Maybe they've chosen wrong. Maybe the woman is abusive. Maybe they just can't put up with it anymore. And, you know, they just feel as though it's not good for their well-being. They're unhappy. And yet I can understand that. But I don't understand when they stop seeing the children. That's what I don't understand. Um, what else was that? I wrote down a few things here. Um, for men, regardless of whether they're the biological father, they should take young people into their hearts. They should be a shoulder for them to lean on. And they should be able to teach them stuff. They shouldn't, you know, if you see a young boy out there on his own, you should be able to talk to them. I know we live in a very precarious society. We don't know how people are going to react. I know I saw some boys climbing up on this, um, on these shutters in a shop. And I said, what are you doing? And they started effing and blinding and following me to work. And I was thinking, bloody hell. But I said, that's probably because I'm a woman. If that was a man, maybe they would have listened. I don't know. I just think there's something about grown men that commands respect. And regardless of how you feel, if you assert that respect and you are confident, you will get that respect. Some people, like I say, command respect. Some people who are, have their insecurities demand respect. And the two are totally different. So... Um, I wrote down here, a fathers who leave, is it a fear of failure? And there again, is quitting failure. I mean, if you give up, does that mean you failed? Or does it depend on the circumstances? If it's, like I said, if it affects your well-being, your health is affected by it, if you have abusive wife, because it works both ways, you know, some women, they're bloody crazy. They're nutters. Have you seen the Angry Black Woman movie? Anyway, I don't know if she was driven to it or not, but yeah, she was a bit cuckoo. Um, some men, they create the worst case scenario because a woman has criticised them or told them something that they don't like. They create the worst case scenario and they think that that woman doesn't want them, doesn't, you know, wants them out of their life. And they so they, they preempt that and they sabotage the relationship by leaving even before it's had a chance, not knowing what the outcome might have been. Um, oversensitivity. We have a lot of men who are oversensitive. That could come from a variety of reasons, you know, from being brought up in a family where they were constantly criticised or whether they was bullied. All kinds of things um, cause people to be overly sensitive. And oversensitive can have its advantages and disadvantages. Um, fear of rejection. Um, you know, we have situations where we're talking about children now. Is a child really going to reject the father? Maybe if the father has let them down, maybe if the father hasn't been around, he might say, listen, you're not my father. I've never seen you. I don't know who you are when you're trying to patch things up. But it, you can't go out of your child's life for 15, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years and see him and expect him to accept you just because you say, I'm your father. It doesn't work like that. Fortunately, well, I, you know, when I went to see my father, I was an adult. I was 21 and that's the first time I saw him. But what I saw when I saw my father, I saw myself. He looked so much like me. And there's the only thing I wanted to do was ask him questions. And I asked him questions and I got answers. And from that moment, I was absolutely fine. Sometimes children just want answers. They just want answers. So allow them to ask questions and just listen. Um... Feelings of inadequacy, like I said, you know, do you feel inadequate? Do you feel as though you can't, cannot support the family? Or do you feel you're not able to live up to the mother's expectations or your children's expectations? And what is causing that? You know, ask yourself, what's causing the fact for you to feel inadequate? Is it because you don't have a job? Is it because um, of some other reason? I don't know. But you need to check that because it might not be justified. 
um, their upbringing. I've said that. No love could be their ego. Sometimes some men, you know, they have an ego problem. You know, you say something to some man and it's like, who do you think you are? You know, you can't talk to me like that. Um, you know, some men, you know, because they can't challenge you intellectually, they give you a smack around the face. You know, they abuse you. They don't know how to handle um, criticism or feedback. So they get aggressive and hostile. And that makes situations worse. Worse, they have to be able to take criticism. Nobody's perfect. And there's no point running away from it. No point running away from criticism because you're going to face it time and time again until you've resolved it. You know when they say, you you know, the situation repeats itself until you've learnt the lesson. So you're going to find yourself in a, the same situation with different people until you've learnt the lesson and until you've learnt to accept your foibles and your flaws and still love yourself for it. Uh, not ready to commit. We have some men, you know, they run off and leave their children just because they're not ready to commit. They were with the women. The woman was great. She looked buff and everything. Next minute, you know, she's got a big belly. She's now got a kid who's, cry who's crying, who's puking up over the place. She hasn't got time for you. She's telling you to go out and get the nappies. And, you know, you're trying to kiss her and she stinks of pee and you know she doesn't look very attractive because she has no time to do her hair and you're like oh I didn't sign up for this and then you th you think oh well I must have made a mistake I don't like her anymore she's not who I thought she was this relationship is not what I thought it would be I'm gonna chip when if you'd only stuck it out and went through that challenge together you don't know what the outcome might have been um lack of confidence i've already said that you need to be confident with your woman you need to be able to stand up to her in a positive way not in an aggressive way not in an insulting way and not in, in a disrespectful way but you need to be able to stand your ground if you've done something and she challenges you on it you need to be able to say why you've done it and you know and not feel as though she's got the upper hand you know you, that, and that takes confidence and self assuranceness and it takes assertiveness. You know, but a lot of times, you know, men get aggressive when they can't deal with their emotions. And that's a downhill spiral. And that's how a lot of relationships break down because the people cannot communicate effectively. And that's one of the things you need to learn to communicate effectively, not take offense at every little thing and then shoot off and run off. You know what I mean? It's just not it's just not conducive to stability um, and the self-deception. Sometimes you've deceived yourself into thinking you've made the right choice. You do try to go along with it. You find that it's self-destructive. So you think, no, I really cannot go along with it. I've got to leave. Now, these are some of the reasons I'm thinking that uh, men leave their fathers. They might leave their children. Um, my father's some men stick around and some don't. You might have other reasons that I haven't covered, but I'm a woman. I don't know. So um, it is an important um, topic to cover because, you know, I think a lot of people want to know why some fathers can stay the course and some men run away at the first opportunity. Anyway, that's all for now. Bye bye.